Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Stefan Eriksson joins us from Umeå, Sweden, where he is Chief Marketing Officer for Confitel, an innovator in video conferencing technology since 1988. The Swedish company recently introduced a new business class webcam called the Cam 10, which was designed specifically for hybrid work environments. As we all know, COVID-19 has made us more dependent on video conferencing, and a great web camera is essential. But the company is also a bit of a pioneer in audio conferencing technology. It's a category I wanted to learn more about and for sure will be of interest to anyone in the residential tech space, as well as my fellow work-from-home professionals. Stefan, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really thrilled to, to be invited to your podcast. Well, I, I, I believe this is the furthest distance that I've uh, been able to interview someone. So um, how are things in Sweden today? Yeah, this weekend was really awesome. Uh, we went out for the traditional, uh, this time of year, uh, it's, it's really the winter spring time. You can go out and do some both downhill and, and cross country skiing. It was lovely. Uh, but now we expect the the spring to come really uh, but today it's snowing <laughs> heavily <laughs> so we'll see about that when it happens actually well, yeah, i'm uh, one, about one hour flight north of stockholm okay in sweden well i i did a little bit of homework on sweden i i wanted to make sure i didn't ask any silly questions uh that were uh i i i was i read a great new yorker article about uh the the dreaded covid19 and i I, I remembered, okay, there, that, that was the thing for a while where Sweden was experimenting with an idea and it didn't go so well um, on how to handle <laughs> COVID. But, but I did learn about population density in Sweden and, and, and how uh, the, the country is, uh, the size of the country is similar to uh, Los Angeles County, which uh, gave me a sense of what that, that experiment looked like in terms of mm. population. But uh, uh, I don't, we, we will, we'll touch on COVID a little later when we talk about challenges for the business. Um, I, I don't want to dwell on that from the top because it's a bummer. But yep. what about, um, let's talk about uh, Confitel. It's uh, an interesting spelling of a company. So just so people know which company we're talking about, K-O-N-F-T-E-L, which is a clever combination of conference and telephone and that sort of thing. Um, can you give me a little background on that uh, founding in 1988 and how the company came about? It's not a fly-by-night, just started um, kind of company. It's been around, and we may not know as well in the U.S., but uh, give us a little bit of that origin story. Yeah, we're, we're trying to change that now uh, to make po- more people aware, uh, sure. especially in the AV industry, uh, who we are, Comfortel, and, and what what we can offer to the uh, and customers and also channel partners, of course. Uh, but I mean, the company kicked off with uh, an, an innovation to, to solve a customer challenge. It was actually a local bank, bank manager here in Umeå, northern Sweden. Uh, they built a new office and he had a quite big meeting room. Uh, and uh, quite often he had to, yeah, he had these phone meetings. But he was so uh, disturbed by the crappy audio. <laughs> so uh, he started to talk uh, to some of, of the technicians that were involved uh, in the, um, this, uh, the, the, the construction. And uh, uh, one of them was actually uh, Peter Enkel, our current CEO and, the, and one of the two founders. Uh, so they started to look in how can we ch- uh, actually solve this problem. Uh, and the result uh, came out uh, a couple of years later, first in this room, particular room, and then a couple of years later um, with the first actual ta- tabletop conference phone to reach the market. Uh, and uh, I mean, through the years, we have uh, adapted to new network and connectivity technologies, enhanced the audio performance, and uh, add a lot of different features and functions, of course, in the products. Uh, and then um, a bit more than two years ago, uh, we decided really now it's time to shift into video as well, mm-hmm. uh, to go with our customers into video meetings. Uh, so that's what we've done. Uh, audio is still 
the absolute foundation for a successful distance meeting. That's what, what I believe and what we argue. Uh, but um, yeah, videos also add another dimension and, and uh, is expected by the customers. And uh, when we have added that uh, media into our offering, uh, we do it with the same uh, idea to provide good quality, uh, I guess, right. uh, for better experience in the meetings. Well, the timing couldn't have been uh, more uh, perfect as far as having everyone need this technology now. Um, I, I do want to dive into the products, but I did want to get to know you a little bit better. I'm not going to do the deep dive into your bi biography or CV, but uh, I did want to know um, how did how did you uh, link up with the company? What was your background? You're, you're a marketing officer, so it could have been in any anything um, <laughs> the way things go in, in marketing, but I'm sure you, you must have some tech background of some sort before you got to the company. Yeah, maybe you should... You could expect that, but uh, actually, I mean, I haven't really had a straight career uh, in, into this. Uh, I'm, I'm educated in uh, communication. I'm not an engineer. I uh, started working uh, as a journalist in, in general media outlets. Uh, and and uh, so uh, as a journalist, writing a journalist and editor. And, and uh, But I've always been interested in, in the latest technology, especially probably in, in, in audio, because I've... Uh, been a hobby musician since uh -huh. my youth days mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, then I ended up uh, editor and editor-in-chief for Swedish Telecoms magazine ah. uh, and I stayed there for almost 14 years and, and uh, of course I, I, I got to learn a lot about uh, the IT and telecoms industry in various aspects and also the market players and the dynamics of this industry and uh, so and also went in from publishing to a uh, broader scope, including live events and mm. speaking at conferences and, and, and that. And in the process, I got also to know Comftel as one of the companies that we tried to cover uh, with this magazine title. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, after all those years in journalism and publishing, uh, I started to, to look for a change in my career. Uh, and I discussed that with the... Yeah, a couple of people. Yeah. And the one day, Peter Renkel, the CEO of Comfortel, he, he called and wanted to discuss their challenges in, in marketing communications. And that is, I think, seven years okay. back now. So uh, I joined them uh, as marketing manager and now uh, CMO. Yeah. Well, you didn't quite join the dark side, as we say, from the uh, the journalism world. Uh, but but <laughs> I, I have been yeah, tempted, yeah, I mean, been tempted uh, myself to, to to make that leap, and so far they I, keep grabbing me back to journalism. Yeah, I fully understand what you mean. I mean that's something I discussed with myself uh, when I was doing this shift. Um, and but uh, yeah, I think that that what I do here and now also has a purpose it's meaningful uh it's on the commercial side and but that also gives me a lot of for my personal sake uh, a lot of of uh, interesting uh, challenges and, and stimulates me so sure. uh, it, i'm happy with the shift that's great that's great um i i, I feel like i'm talking to to uh, one of my peers truly now i typically end up talking to people who are more from that engineering side of things and uh and having an opportunity to speak to someone who, who really is a a, a writer, a journalist in in their their career that that's my world yeah. as well. But let's talk tech. Um, and and we, neither one of us will get too buried in in the in the minutia because that's not how we roll. But <laughs> I, I I just wanted to kind of understand um, more about the new products and maybe uh, talk about the shift to the to the video. Uh, technology and what some of the the goals when a, what what the company was looking to do to innovate um, with, when you start from scratch um, on the video side of uh, the video conference uh, video and audio conferencing yeah I mean uh, I think we uh, we we first announced uh, entering into video conferencing in 2018. And a bit later, we we uh, we brought in, um, developed and brought in two uh, USB conference cameras for different meeting scenarios. Uh, and um, with our, uh, car, our our 
already existing uh, speaker phones, mm -hmm. those cameras. Uh, we put together uh, video kits, uh, mm -hmm. also including a connection hub uh, to make it really simple for the users to come into a meeting room with their own laptop and just connect one USB cable and, and hook up to both the screen in the room and the uh, audio device and the video camera. Mm. Uh, so uh, I think that sounds very basic, but that's actually the innovation that we started off with in this space. Uh, we took the components, the pieces already available in the market, actually, uh, and uh, created very simple and easy to understand video bundles for the meeting rooms of all different kind sizes. Uh, and, and uh, presented this as our offering. Uh, and uh, we have seen uh, also now some really big competitors in the market follow us in that mm. innovation. Also offering uh, exactly this kind of, of uh, setup and bring your own meeting scenario uh, for their customers. Okay. Uh, so um, yeah, in that sense, uh, it was, was a level of, of innovation, even because Maybe uh, it w was more uh, an innovation in terms of how to package this and communicate okay. it to the market uh, than in actual the, the the technology included. Right. So, so, so the the idea is both you could have this in your uh, company conference room space as a opportunity for the different employees coming in to to set up. Or it could be a portable scenario where you bring it with you, as you said, bring your own. Yes, uh, the bring your own in, in uh, when we're talking uh, vid, uh, room scenarios that you bring your own laptop, you bring oh, your sure. own Mac or PC into the, the room, and you use that uh, instead of having a, a, a video codec uh, 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 in the room. Right. Understand. Uh, I mean, we're very used these days. Uh, whether we. Yeah, whatever cloud app or service we, we uh, use on our uh, laptops right. uh, to enable uh, people to, to just take that experience, the well-known uh, technology that, that they use every day on their own the personal uh, uh, computer uh, to bring that into the meeting room and just hook it up very easily uh, to the um, camera and audio and screen in the room. Right. And, uh, that, that's what we solved uh, with the video kits uh, that uh, we have seen a huge uptake uh, in, in sales for those. So uh, I'm not possible. Uh, it's not possible for me uh, to, to uh, uh, give you direct numbers, but um, it's uh, the, the video and the video bundles. Uh, it's uh, dominating our sales uh, today. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, I, I do uh, want to continue talking about the the video technology and get into some uh, specifics about uh, um, why a separate camera from uh, maybe an embedded a camera and a and a laptop. But uh, we will uh, continue our conversation after a short break. This episode of Residential Tech Talks is brought to you by Ring Home Security Systems and Smart Home Automation. Get protection at every corner with their intelligent security cameras, alarm systems, and video doorbells. Receive notifications when motion is detected or check on your home anytime with Live View in the Ring app. Help keep your neighborhood safer with the Neighbors app to share information and discuss safety concerns in this hyper-local social networking platform. Ring's mission is simple. Make neighborhoods safer. Discover all the smart home security products by Ring. Go to ring.com. Welcome back. I'm talking to Stefan Eriksson, CMO of the Swedish video conferencing and audio conferencing technology manufacturer, Confital. Um, so Stefan, I did kind of wonder when I first saw your product, the video conferencing product, um, here I sit doing an interview with my, uh, my Mac laptop with an embedded camera, which seems to work pretty well. Um, and then uh, I'm going to get a chance to try out your your new Cam 10 product, I believe. Uh, why would uh, one choose uh, an external camera in that scenario, very specific scenario, but one that I think with a lot of people working from home may be using? Uh, what, what's the advantage of using that external camera? Yeah, there are a number of reasons, I guess, uh, to go for an external webcam, business webcam. Um, 
I mean, uh, I, I, I'm sure that a lot of users have experienced the uh, quality of the built-in cameras and laptops uh, not really sufficient for, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, today uh, we need to be able to, to uh, have also the most business-critical meetings uh, mm -hmm. from our home office uh, or wherever we are. Uh, and uh, that's typically scenarios when we uh, want to uh, appear on our best side and <laughs> and look good in the meeting. So quality uh, matters. And uh, uh, so overall quality, yes, that's a number one, I guess. But also, uh, as for me here now, I have my laptop to the right and I have a big screen in front of me uh, that I'm using. And uh, if I would uh, to use the laptop camera, you would see my profile. Uh, I don't know if uh, if I look that pretty uh, <laughs> from front front on, but uh, but uh, it wouldn't be really a good one. You, I wouldn't be able to connect you with you uh, looking into the camera. Right. Uh, so that's I guess the 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 main reason to go for a personal webcam, a business webcam, if you have an ex external uh, screen to place a camera where it should be. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Right in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have uh, at times had dual screens and I did have that challenge where I'm used to looking at the bigger uh, external monitor. And then for for pre pre COVID days, I would switch to the, you know, have a conference situation and I'm looking at my laptop and my eyes just weren't used to that <laughs> setup. And I, I get that. So but you also have other features within um, your cameras, the the, uh, the Zoom features and things like that, great uh, digital Zoom opportunities that you didn't wouldn't necessarily have uh, on an embedded Yeah, that's camera. true. I mean, uh, uh, the the Comfortable Cam 10 we're talking about now, our, our personal uh, device, uh, business webcam, um, you have it's a, it's a has a digital zoom uh, feature uh, that you can uh, use so that can come in handy if you want to uh, focus a bit uh, on, on narrowing down the field of view mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it also has a control app uh, to to manage some other features uh, normally not necessary but you can do it um, so um, that could be, um, uh, I mean, different reasons uh, to go for a, a, a business webcam. But actually, yeah, this is our most recent uh, addition to our portfolio. But overall, we are uh, mainly focused on the meeting rooms. Okay. Uh, so we have two other cameras in our uh, portfolio, uh, a 4K digital camera, that that works also perfectly for for uh, personal scenarios uh, mm -hmm. like in home office, uh, but uh, but it's it's very flexible flexible I would say uh, both for the small huddle rooms and scenarios where you have to sit very close to a, a screen uh, with a, a white table to be able with a wide field of view and that camera uh, mm -hmm. to cover uh, everyone included in. in meeting in the room uh, and then we have uh, also uh, a proper um, bigger PTZ camera USB conference camera uh, with optical zoom capabilities with a fantastic uh, image quality uh, that goes from more small middle sized room up to very large uh, scenarios but we see also the Cam 20, the digital uh, 4K camera, mm -hmm. uh, very feasible for, for bigger scenarios like in classrooms. Uh, oh, yeah. In the US, we have uh, sold a lot into that vertical uh, during the pandemic. Mm. So uh, really flexible uh, options. Yeah, so this transition into the US market, that's... Uh, very uh, interesting to to find a company that uh, you you don't know about, and perhaps because I mostly am focused on the residential channel, and maybe because of the education and the office, which is a crossover opportunity for a lot of people doing residential integration, mm -hmm. um, but it's not specifically like the Infocom um, sort of scenario where people are focused completely on that area. What what was the strategy? Um, how did how the how's the transition been going in terms of connecting with 
uh, distribution in the U.S., uh, dealer uh, integrators in the U.S.? Uh, what, what's been the strategy there so far for the company? Yeah, uh, our overall strategy is uh, is completely two tier model uh, when we go to market. So uh, our primary customers are our uh, distribution partners, and that uh, also valid for for uh, uh, North America. And uh, so we sell our products through their network of resellers. And uh, yes, since we uh, went into video, uh, we're more actively uh, developing uh, the relations that we have with, with a more AV-focused uh, distributor, distributors and uh, their reseller uh, networks. So, um, I mean, traditionally, we are looking to have uh, a set of uh, distribution partners in for each market to cover different segments. Traditional telecom, IT, uh, AV, of course, now. And, and um, so, so we need to... Um, cover uh, all of it yeah mm -hmm. and and I, i'm imagining um trade shows conventions that sort of thing are part of your uh, marketing strategy and of course that's been uh paused uh in the past year with yeah. with covid um what what have you been able to do to adjust to that in terms of marketing you, you were able to reach me which is great you have a pr agency in the mm -hmm. u.s that uh I know very well, and they've been great about that. What other uh, strategies have you done in terms of continuing that that uh, visibility when you can't go to in-person events as well? Mm. I think we've uh, done what most most companies in this industry uh, has uh, to increase our uh, online uh, yeah. visibility uh, and presence uh in, in different ways uh, social platforms and channels and we have also uh, increased our our active pr work yes uh, on the global scale actually uh, and um uh, and, uh, and of course especially uh, earlier in the pandemic we we uh, did a, a couple of webinar series so we're very well attended mm -hmm. we all know that uh, it has been maybe a little bit of fatigue uh, <laughs> with the <laughs> the audiences uh, you don't want to spend yeah too much time maybe uh, joining <laughs> webinars so uh, we had to rethink that a little bit uh, mm -hmm. but i think that we are coming back uh, pretty soon with a series of new webinars and uh, that that yeah that that's a way how, how we have tried to to cope with the situation. Uh, we were very from the start worried, mm -hmm. worried when we when we had to cancel uh, the um, uh, live events, in person events, right. especially in North America, uh, like you mentioned, the Infocom mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, uh, another important one for us each year has been the. Um, uh, Enterprise Connect, uh, big trade show, and and there are a number of others also. Uh, how this would affect our business and uh, our ability to reach new customers. Right. Uh, but we've seen our own sales and and this market as a whole really surge during the pandemic. So so uh, that. Uh, did yeah it has worked out fine for us and uh, well well fortunately with even though there's the the fatigue with uh webinars the opportunity to communicate uh through a video conferencing platform kind of does a little bit of your selling for you i'd imagine the quality of your of your video um is proof of the proof is in the pudding there as far as your company goes that's what you're doing yeah yeah that's a good way uh, through uh, at the same time demo the product that we have yeah. and talk about the solutions and and the offerings and what sure, we, sure. how we uh, see the the end user behavior change and trend market trends and what we want to share with the audiences uh, i haven't didn't mention that but i i, I don't know um, uh, if the video will be on for this uh, podcast in any way but uh, i'm using the cam 10 now in my home office so yeah, it looks great. It, it, uh, it, it's a very nice, um, soft sort of video quality that's like uh, 
generous to i we haven't met before but uh mm -hmm. you, you look fabulous you're <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know how much lighting you're using or if it's uh it's doing all the work for you but uh actually the lighting in the room uh here is not optimal uh well it looks good the, you, the... <laughs> you've done you, it, the camera's doing some work then because uh mm -hmm. i i've mm -hmm. i've talked to plenty of folks where there's nothing we can do with the lighting. They they just mm. look terrible <laughs> in general because <laughs> the room is not designed for it. But uh, yeah. but but I, I did. Uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you about was something that really jumped out at me, and it's a big part of uh, your your company story, and that's the climate neutral um, aspect of how how you're producing products and how the company uh, philosophy works in terms of reducing emissions and that sort of thing. Can you? Uh, just give us an explanation about what that is all about. It's an independent nonprofit organization. I'm familiar with the climate neutral organization, but what does it take mm. for a company to, to be certified for that? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. I mean, for us, it, it, it's, we've always promoted the uh, environmental benefits of distance meetings. Sure. Uh, to the ability to reduce travel and, and, uh, reduce the emissions by that. Uh, but we came to a point where we, we uh, decided we want to do something more. We uh, started looking at our own carbon footprint uh, and uh, how we could do something more together with our customers. Uh, we, we firmly believe that this is a key issue for the future of our planet so and also for our business. It goes hand, hand in hand, I think. Uh, so, uh, we looked around uh, for different opportunities, how to go about this. We, uh, we found the uh, uh, Climate Neutral Organization uh, and decided that uh, we would like to try to, to be certified by them. Uh, and the process is that you have to um, start with, the, you have to aggregate a lot of data mm. from your own business. Uh, from... Uh, all the way from manufacturing and the uh, sourcing of material and uh, everything included in, in, the, in, the, in the full chain, uh, the manufacturing and then the distribution chain and all the way to, to um, uh, the resellers. And uh, also uh, analyzing your own uh, internal processes uh, in headquarters and, and, and that. And uh, it was very interesting. We saw that uh, our, I mean, absolutely, the, the, the majority of, of our carbon footprint uh, comes from the manufacturing mm -hmm. and uh, from the uh, use of material uh, in the products that we sell. Uh, so um, this certification uh, gives us really a, a way to, to uh, deal with that. Uh, and after the uh, aggregation of the data, uh, and you analyze and you get the result, uh, your carbon footprint. Uh, and uh, in the um, certification, it's included that you need to, um, uh, to um, uh, offset those carbon uh, mm. th with the carbon, buying carbon credits. Okay. Uh, so you have to do that. And, uh, and on top of that, also commit to a number of actions uh, for the year to come. Uh, to bring down the company's own emissions uh, mm. in different areas. So uh, um, we did that uh, and were uh, actually the first company uh, in the industry to become climate neutral certified uh, last year in April. And now uh, we have uh, done this exercise uh, once again, mm. uh, aggregated all the data and uh, Actually, it was interesting to see uh, how it affected uh, the, the increase in volume and, the vo and uh, growing sales that we had during the year, uh, mm. how it affected our carbon uh, footprint. So um, we are now uh, on track to be certified again okay. uh, for, uh, uh, for this year uh, with climate uh, neutral. And... Uh, this, yeah, we are allowed to talk about it, but it will be uh, an announced, uh, I think, on Earth Day, uh, okay. together with uh, other companies that also been able to to uh, be certified for this year. Uh, and uh, at a later point, we will also talk about the actions, uh, reduction actions that we have, will be committing to uh, 
uh, for this year uh, in, as part of the, the certification. Well, you're fortunate that your product isn't a very large product to ship, but you still have to deal with packaging. And that's been a, a major challenge, protecting the product with packaging that can be um, recycled or reused. So that, that seems like yeah. that would be part of it. We, we had done uh, some work on that already before we went into this uh, work with uh, uh, Climate Neutral uh, to, to uh, go for more environmental friendly cardboard in boxes and and also uh, to be able to in the log logistic change chain uh, to be more efficient on the pallets uh, how to uh, pack products and, and everything uh, but uh, as one of the um, actions for last year was actually to get rid of a lot of plastic bags mm. uh, that held cables uh, in our boxes okay. uh, and that w we have done that uh, and now we are going for for other actions for this year, and uh, I, I shouldn't go into detail. But I mean, uh, as I, I mentioned, that we see that the main part of our uh, emissions come from the production uh, yeah. and uh, the uh, manufacturing facilities that we uh, use for for uh, when we produce our products. So uh, we will now go into more direct uh, dialogue with our partners on that side and see what we can do uh, in, in uh, raising the energy efficiency and, and bringing down the emissions as part of the, the actions going forward. Now, uh, being headquartered in Sweden, uh, I don't know what the manufacturer is. This, is it similar to the U.S. where a lot of your manufacturing it for an electronics product is in Asia or uh, where, where are Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the early days, we had manufacturing here in Sweden, uh, but um, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, it was long before my time um, <laughs> in, in, when I joined the company, uh, was moved to Asia. Yes. Right. So we have a number, number of partners in different areas of uh, Asia. Very good. Well, I, I, it's been great getting to know the brand better. I look forward to reviewing the product and uh, um, myself and uh, exp in improving the video quality of my uh, webinars and also uh, podcast, the video component of the podcast. So, so that's great to, to learn more about you. And Stefan Erickson, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was great talking to you. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Stefan Eriksson is Chief Marketing Officer for Confitel in Sweden. You can learn more about his company at Confitel.com. We'll put that in the show notes because I'm sure the spelling uh, for those listening um, may have slipped your mind. So um, I appreciate it. Yeah, the K is a bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a combination of letters that uh, your brain's not immediately used to seeing, but it, it makes sense once you say it out loud. Um, yeah. Well, that wraps up today's show. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Be sure to share, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. And check out all the latest tech news at restechtoday.com. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell.